I spend dozens of hours covering the news so you don't have to, and I'm gonna give you the news that matters to you for AI in just 10 minutes. Okay, number one, Anthropic launches Claude Sonnet 4.5. Why should you care? You should care because this is the first model that is extremely good at both building and editing Excel files and also at building PowerPoint. It also has a very strong coding DNA. This model famously built Slack over again in 30 hours straight coding. One task, just went and did it. Now, I have seen in my testing so far, not 30 hour run times, but longer run times than I have seen before. This model likes to take its time, think through problems and solve them correctly. And it has a strong check your work ethos. So why you should care is it is driving us toward that autonomous development future, but it will only work if you set it against the right problem space, if you architect it within a framework that works, if you think about the task you're giving it. In some of my testing outside the coding environment, I found similar constraints and opportunities. If I give it a good prompt for PowerPoint, it's gonna produce a great deck. If I give it a lousy prompt for PowerPoint, I'm gonna get something difficult to build and unreadable. So. This matters for you because it prioritizes your intent and it prioritizes your ability to define work. If you can define the work, this thing is super powered. Story number two, Walmart has deployed the YB, which is a terrible name, super agent across 200 plus AI tools. And you care because it shows that AI agents are operative in the biggest companies in the world right now, and they deliver value. They're getting a 95% auto fix rate on bugs, and they're doing it across a complex ecosystem inside their development environment, now, today, deployed. And so this is showing us and reminding us that AI orchestration is here at scale already. And the federated agent model that they're using across multiple workflows is underlining that you can get really complex multi-workflow footprint set up for agents that do work. So why should you care? Because if you haven't believed that agents are coming, they are. And if you have believed that agents are coming, you can actually build them and deploy them at scale. It's just a function of having the right workflow, defining your intent properly, and then orchestrating it out. There's more detail on that coming. I'm going to do a deep dive on that. Story number three, OpenAI has launched ChatGPT Pulse and Sora. And I'm putting those stories together because they are intentionally together for OpenAI. OpenAI has launched two new advertising surfaces in the last week. Why? They are going after ads, people. Why should you care? If you're in marketing, you care because of budgeting. If you are building for product, you care because you have to think about where your product is gonna appear, not just in chats, but now potentially as a product offering. Yes, I am not just assuming this will be a consumer ad platform. It is likely, given the way we use AI, this will also become a B2B ad platform. This is going to be one of the biggest developments in marketing in the last 20 years, and we are going to start to see it, and we saw the first product services for it launch this week. So pay attention to Sora, pay attention to Pulse and where they're going. They point the future. And they also, by the way, underline an important component of ChatGPT's strategy. They look at a model and they decide when it's ready and then they find a surface for it and kick it out. I would argue, they haven't said this, but I would argue that Pulse is its own ChatGPT model. The results I get from Pulse overnight are quite high quality. And they are different qualitatively than what I get from standard chat GPT-5. Sora, of course, is its own model. Very famously, Sora 2, right? They had it in Sora 1. It wasn't quite ready. They didn't launch a consumer product. Now they feel they have it and they launch a consumer product. This suggests how OpenAI is going to approach future launches of their models in 2026. Look for more net new products out of that company. Next, AWS is launching the Agent Core MCP server. Why should you care? It's really about AWS playing catch up. They are providing open source infrastructure for building production ready AI agents with built in runtime, gateway integration, identity management, memory, and all the rest of it. 
The server integrates with 40 plus different MCP aware clients, including Anthropic, Claude Code, Cursor, etc. And it gives developers the option to build agents that can securely call external tools and also maintain context across sessions. You know why you should care? Because Amazon is leaning into open source to preserve their cloud revenue. And if you are on AWS, this is probably a great deal for you. If you are not on AWS, I don't know that it's a reason to switch, but it's something to keep an eye on because Microsoft and Google may be under pressure now to lean this hard into open source agent infrastructure in their own way. They've done some, right? They have the A to A kit from, uh, from Google, and I think there's the agent development kit from Google. So there's some work being done here. AWS is pushing hard on becoming the place for developers to build because they need to preserve the cloud revenue. And that is something that implies that Azure and Google are really gaining ground with AI native organizations. And that has come through in recent quarterly earnings. And that's something that is going to shift the balance of power and ultimately where developers and builders prefer to build. Because if you're not building with AI these days, where are you? All right, next story. Microsoft Copilot is opening the door to other models. For the first time, we have Copilot working with Claude models, and we have the idea of a multi-agent enterprise strategy inside the Copilot ecosystem. This is not super surprising since Microsoft has already done this with Azure, and Azure has been a place where you can get multiple models in a secure sandbox, but they are going a step farther with Copilot. What Satya Nadella is realizing is that he needs people to care about Copilot and the AI Microsoft productivity experience. And if that means he can't have his own proprietary AI models and he needs to bring in other people's models to make that work, he will do it because he needs to hold on to his attention and distribution footprint for Copilot products. That is the next generation of Office. And if I were Satya, I would also be worried and I would also be releasing now because of the power of Sonnet 4.5, which is the first story I shared in this little update. Sonnet is attacking work primitives that Microsoft has dominated for decades. They're going after Excel, they're going after PowerPoint, they're going after Docs, and they're doing it well. Microsoft would rather join them, right? Like Microsoft would rather bring them into the fold, work with them on Copilot, and make sure they get the distribution advantage secured for Microsoft. Because since the days when we shipped CDs on software, Microsoft has built off this distribution advantage in the office. Everybody runs Windows. This is why it doesn't really matter what Slack does. It matters what Teams does because Teams has the distribution. So you should care because this is the first case where a major enterprise platform is offering competing AI models inside their same interface they use for selling their own software, right? Like this is, this is much more integrated than we have seen when you have backend developer availability of multiple models. This is, no, you can choose as the end customer what model you want. We are starting to see enough competition where vendor lock-in for AI may just not be tenable anymore. And that is going to matter. Competitive pressure is going to intensify. We are going to start to see IT departments able to negotiate better terms because of moves like this. Story number six, Salesforce is shipping Agent Force Vibes, which I don't know that I would have called it that, but here we are. They are looking to bring natural language coding to enterprise environments, and they're leaning on the Salesforce-iness of it all. They're saying we'll have built-in security, governance, and compliance controls. In many ways, this is exactly like the Teams and Slack conversation, except ironically, in this case, Salesforce is the one with the distribution advantage versus tools like Lovable or Bolt, which don't have the long-term SaaS enterprise deals. Salesforce does. And so they can go to a CTO and they can say, oh, you've heard about Lovable. I love vibe coding too. Why don't you use Agent Force Vibes? And the platform includes the special autonomous AI agent. It connects to Salesforce orgs. It can talk to your data securely. It can actually enable you to build securely. This is Salesforce's play to build a vibe coding co-pilot for lack of a better term. What they want is to give enterprise developers a way to expand their footprint and to work with product managers and marketers and others in their orgs in ways that are integrated into their systems instead of having all of this shadow IT. I get why they're doing it. 
I get why security first is attractive, but what you should watch for is the actual usage and conversation around this tool. It is easy for this to get sold to CTOs. It is not easy to persuade product managers, marketers, CS leaders who are already vibe coding using shadow IT like Lovable to move to a tool like this if it's not actually good. And that's really the trick. You can sell the software, but you can't make people use it. And so what I'm gonna be watching for is whether we get an enterprise built vibe coding tool that is actually good. I think the jury is still out. And that's the news that mattered this week. See, saved you dozens of hours.